presentation is about artificial intelligence and it's applicable to all people, whether you're a certified teacher, classified employee, a student, and it's my intention to get you up to speed on how artificial intelligence is going to change the world. I think it's almost as big as the internet, potentially. Uh, it is a service that's delivered over the internet, but it is huge. So if you want to learn more about artificial intelligence and how it can make your life easier, uh, watch this video. So first of all, there's a URL that you go to. I pasted it in here. First time you come in, it may say it's checking for security reasons or something like that. And it'll eventually get to a screen like this. The first time you come in, you hit sign up. And I personally use my Google credentials. And that way I don't have to have another username and password. I'm going to go back. And since I've already done that, I just have to log in. So continue with Google. And, and then so it says it's a free research preview uh, there's they have safeguards but don't put in anything that is offensive don't put in anything that's personal kind of you know to some degree be careful with your data like you should always be uh, but I'm gonna go through it's called chat GPT they'd like your feedback but uh, chat what I want to focus on is the first four letters here chat so this is like a chat service it's Think of it, it's kind of like Google. You can put in, ask it something, and you'll get a result, but you can chat. You can keep the conversation going. Uh, think of it as a, it's artificial intelligence and baked into uh, a website. And it's, there's lots of geeky things we could talk about how it's, how it's built on all kinds of knowledge. I'm not so interested in doing that. I want to talk about how you can use it personally and then I want to see how uh, you can use it in education specifically. Uh, the reason I want to start with uh, using it personally is the fact that I was pretty excited by this. Dylan and Gordon, we played with this some, but I just, you know, I didn't quite put it together uh, what it could be used for. And then, so I thought, I had a, a real practical reason to use it, and I used it, and I've gotten really excited about it. And uh, so I, and then all of a sudden I was like, I've got to let everybody know what's going on here. I have to give credit to Dylan's really pushed this, and there's other services like this based on artificial intelligence. And we've had conversations, and Gord and others. I had Jay Gilliland get a hold of me the other day. I was wondering how this is going to impact education. and. And so I think it's time for me to, to send this out. This is optional. I'm sending this out on January 1st, 2023. Just start the new year off with some technology that you've never, some of you have never seen before, a lot of you probably. So the first thing I would do, is it's, it's a chat. So let's see, what is chat GPT? And you hit enter on your computer and then it'll go through and it'll start explaining what it is. And you go, okay, I'm learning that it's, it does, it's a model and a computer. It sounds pretty geeky to me. Um, uh, so you read it. I'm going to look at that and go, well, that's just, let's explain in simple terms. Because that was just a little bit too much for me. So a computer program that's designed to generate responses is, to messages in a conversation. Uh, it's got a language model trained on a large data set of human generated text. So think about all the text, maybe on the internet, not all of it, but, and they, they've somehow built, captured that and created a way that you can converse with data. And so it doesn't necessarily do the, the most current data, but there's so much, so much you can do. So, the best thing I have always learned was if you use technology to solve something for yourself, personalize it, then then we can take it to the next step. And so I'm going to just start with, um, I think of it kind of like a search engine. Um, let's say I, I have a 93 pickup. I'm going to say my 1993 Toyota pickup. 
and this is not true, but it's not starting because it's so reliable, but it's not starting, but the engine does turn over, uh, the engine backfires. What do you suggest? So let's see what it knows about mechanics, this, or, you know, vehicles. So it starts saying, hey, you might have a faulty ignition system, um, fuel problems, exhaust, you know, and again, for me, I'm not a mechanic, but I'm thinking that, you know, somebody down at the bus barn might go, well, gosh, that might be kind of handy to give me a clue. They already, you know, just to speed up things. And then, uh, well, the nice thing is you can keep going. What else could be wrong? And it, it'll keep going and going. Here's some more. Number five. So it's a conversation with your computer in essence, but it's this assistant in the back end that has lots of brains. It's not really brains. It's all computer. It's, but it's a called a machine learning. And, and so I think, first of all, you got to kind of try it out for something that you might want to do. And you go, well, I don't know what it can do. Well, there's an example. I just, I had trouble. Maybe my Toyota could be wrong. Um, one of the crazy things that I'm doing right now is, um, I'm, I'm selling my one house, my rental house. We moved into it. And then thinking, okay, that's what we wanted to do. And now it's like, well, the, the housing market's not too good. We're going to try something different. We're going to sell both houses and see which one sells first. And then we'll figure out where I want to live. But so I'm going to say, like last night, Judy and I were, you know, write a real estate listing for house at 204 Nebraska. It has three bedrooms to put on Zillow. That's Practical. It has three bedrooms and a bonus room. Room and the carpet has been recently replaced in vinyl flooring installed in the basement. And I need some, you know, I could write that in Zillow, but that's not, I'm not an English teacher. You know, I would rather have something. There it comes and it writes up, welcome to 204 Nebraska, this charming two bedroom. It does so much better than what I could do. So it can take my prompts and make it so much better. So then I can copy and paste that into Zillow. So that was, but I could also, I forgot, oh, add in, uh, it has ring cameras and a wireless Orbi system. So you can keep it going and tell it to, and it'll revise that. Now I, when it's done with this, I can copy that, which we actually, we actually did, put it into Zillow, and all of a sudden, you know, Judy, my wife goes, oh my gosh, that is amazing. I didn't know that would happen. And you go, well, that's pretty cool, Zillow, but so, but let me think about a student, Ethan. He wants to sell his Mustang for some dumb reason because, you know, a car, you always have to have a different car. Write a bill of sale, and he might do this, I would do this, that I'm selling, it's a 2010 Mustang. Just something simple like that. Write a bill of sale for me. And again, it gets you started. And then you copy that, put it into a Word document or Google Docs, take it, paste it in there and you you know you could have searched for that on Google too don't get me wrong but it's just think of it as a chat with it and so make it personalized find something that you want to do and put it in there and see if it'll do it uh, it it can explain all kinds of things so now let's just talk about I'm gonna get now in specifically for education let's give me some examples Here's, let's say that uh, um, I'm a teacher. This could happen to anybody in the, the district, pre-K through 12. Um, I needed to write an email about Johnny. Uh, Johnny is a student who is often, we're writing a letter, we need to write a letter to a parent about Johnny. He's often distracted and comes to school with a bad attitude. His grade in math failing and we need to help him. 
So that's what I, I wanted to help me get a letter written. I don't, you know, I'm a busy person. I've got math to teach. Uh, so all of a sudden I need to, I'm not a great at writing letters. So here it is. It'll generate a letter. Now again, you don't have to take it word for word, but you copy it into someplace and you start modify it. And so right there, real quickly, you can send out a message to a parent. So that's an example of something you could do. Um, here, give uh, concrete examples of how to teach science to a first grade classroom. So you're a first grade teacher, you go, gosh, I, we should be teaching more science, but I need some examples. Maybe we already have resources, but give me another. And then you see these little dots here, it means it's working. It means you have to scroll down. And so it comes through, here's a few ideas on how to teach science to first grade classroom. So, and again, you might look it over and go, well, I might think about using one of these ideas or, so it's a brainstorming tool, if nothing else. And uh, talk, it's just, and then you say, oh, okay, give me more, give me five, 10 more examples. See if it'll do that, more examples. And if it doesn't, it'll let you know. Here's 10 additional ideas. So it'll go through, so I'm trying to think of how this could be used in education. If nothing else, we teach certain subjects over and over. How can we teach it better? How can we relate to students better? Um, and so it will give you ideas. You could probably do the same thing, go out and Google, but you might end up with 50 million pages and you're searching through trying to find the one that's relevant. This just kind of, it's just black and white text. Here's some text. There's not a bunch of graphics, uh, so it's it's a it's just a artificial intelligence trying to help you become a better teachers. Uh, I'm I'm going to put in one here. How can uh, and this one? But if you're curious, uh, it's almost finished here. I probably should have put ten. It can give you all kinds of how can teachers incorporate technology to improve learning. So you do that, and away it goes, and it gives you all kinds of examples. Some may or may not be practical, um, but gives you a few ideas, kind of gets you started. You can also do th fun things. So I'm going to put down here, write a joke which encourages school employees to complete their no before cyber security training. So it's gonna write me a joke. It could write a poem, it could do all kinds of, you know, anything you can pretty much think of, it could do. Now, the, that's the good side of things. Now, technology is disruptive. For example, when calculators came out, uh, Math teachers worried that people weren't going to learn how to add or multiply and taking two digit numbers times four digit numbers. And it's like at a certain point, I remember the argument was, well, they won't always have a calculator with them. Well, now we have phones. Everybody always has a calculator. So it changed math. Same thing here is I could say something, if I were a student, write a term paper on the war of 1812. And you go, huh, what's it going to do there? So it will go through and they can copy and paste this. So you, as a teacher, you're going to go, this tool empowers them to do things, maybe cheat, probably. I mean, stu anytime you can make things easier, why wouldn't you? Well, so what you got to do is think about how is this, what are the, the downsides? They're going to find it. There are students already, I'm sure, using it. And how do you, how do you, live in this world with this tool available to everybody. All I know is artificial intelligence is going to change the game tr tremendously. And this is the first tool. It's generation one. It's not maybe even the first, but there's others. There are some that you can describe something and it'll draw a picture or make a logo. You know, we're teaching graphic arts at high school. Maybe we can use artificial intelligence services like this to help get us started with things. Uh, there are copyright implications. There's cheating implications. But 
this service, and it's really free right now, you can, it's amazing what you can do. You can get legal advice. Give me legal, me uh, provide legal advice for Kansas about, about traffic tickets, you know, and it will try to figure out it's not, it won't give, it'll give it, it's not a lawyer. It's basically covered itself. And, but it gets you, it's like a, uh, an amazing technology. And I, I think it's a time that everybody in the district, I don't care what you do. It can make your life easier. It can make you more productive. Uh, one thing I tried earlier, it didn't work. I was hope, wondering if you could paste in and have it proofread student work and things like that. It's not doing that, but it's just a function of time. Think about what the internet was like in the beginning and think about what it's like now. This is artificial intelligence 1.0. I mean, what's it going to be like in 10 years? I mean, I always got excited about the internet when it first came out and then there are negatives and the positives of it. Same thing here, but good luck playing with it. Hopefully this video helps you. Let me know either way.